Hey everybody, it's Jamie Elliott from Grace Ministries of Henderson, North Carolina. It is a blessing to be able to be with y'all tonight. We're having to go uh, live from my household tonight, so at least we have a way to be able to talk about God's Word and recovery tonight. Tonight we're going to start off with prayer, and we're going to be talking about responsibility tonight. And what responsibility means is the responsibility of you far as uh, putting effort to your recovery and in your addiction uh, recovery. You know, it does. It starts with us. Uh, nobody can work this recovery for you. Nobody can work it for me. So I have to work this for myself. And I can't focus on what other people do, what other people say, how they carry their self, or how many drugs they use. The only thing I can do here tonight is worry about Jamie and Jamie's recovery and how recovery will save Jamie's life if I stay in recovery. So the next thing we're going to do is go to prayer. So thank you all for tuning in. I apologize. I think I tried to reach out to about everybody I knew of that would show up in the meeting tonight. And I did put on Facebook today that we would be going live tonight. So here we are and let's get started. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly, most gracious Father, Lord, we just thank you for this privilege to be able to come on live on Facebook, Lord, and be able to talk about uh, recovery, talk about our addictions, and talk about the Word of God and how good He is to us. Lord, I pray that if it's somebody watching tonight that is battling uh, addiction, Lord, that you would just uh, clear their mind and open their hearts for this message tonight. Lord, we just thank you for everything you're doing for us. We thank you for just taking a breath of air. And Lord, we're just privileged to be able to uh, be able to go in your word and to be able to understand and, and just read it and just let your love pull over our bodies. So Lord, we're just going to take this time tonight and we're just going to let the Holy Spirit talk tonight. We're going to let the Holy Spirit move here tonight. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will change hearts and maybe somebody battling with addiction, Lord, that they will wake up in the morning and they will be delivered from addiction. And we just pray for all these things to be done in your will. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So thank God that I'm able to do this tonight. I've got a few unspoken prayers that uh, I want to reach out. And, you know, God knows all our prayers and he knows everything. Whether we know it or not, God knows and he's very aware of what we're going through in life. So, you know, it's nothing that we can't do through God that 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 God created us and God will see that uh, we get through our trials and our, our troubles. But first, we have to, to uh, depend on him to get us through those trials. But I want to start off tonight on responsibility. Some might not like this. Some might. And, and I just pray that uh, this will be something tonight. I didn't really want to talk a lot about responsibility, and I kept trying to move from it and change the order. But I believe truly that God wants me to speak on responsibility because truly, this is my recovery. It's not yours watching. It's not your mom's. It's not your dad's. It's not your wife's, your husband, your kids. This is your recovery. And you have to work this recovery the best way that you can and find fit to do so. I've heard a lot of people, you know, come to me and say, well, Jamie, I'm not coming back to the meeting anymore because I see people using. I, I, I hear things going on. But this is what I want to say tonight. Do you realize when you don't go to a meeting and you step up, step into a comfort zone that is very dangerous when you're by yourself and you're not around God's word, you're not at a meeting, you do not have a routine and you're by yourself. You're like that strayed animal in a pack of just say uh, elk and that lion is preying on that one that's drifting behind. Once that one leads the, leaves the pack of the healthier herd, herd the lion sees him drifting off. Then all of a sudden the lion comes in and snatches that weak one and takes him down. Well, when you don't have a recovery network, you find yourself being strayed out. You find yourself thinking that you are strong enough to fight addiction. You find yourself thinking that you can use today and wake up tomorrow and your life will be changed. It doesn't work that way. You first have to make a change in your life in order for recovery to work. You can't hang around the same people, you can't do the same things, and you can't go to the same uh, areas that you used to in your life. Now, recovery starts with changing your life. Are you ready for a change tonight? 
or are you playing with recovery? See, there's two or three different ways you can do this thing. You can you can play to play, you can act to act, or you can talk to talk. Which one are you doing tonight? Are you just showing up and, and putting on a show saying, I'm clean, but go back home and get high? Are you one of those that's trying to work your recovery, but maybe your faith is weakened? Maybe you're spiritually broke here tonight. Maybe you're going through trials and trouble, and um, you just don't know. You just think you're having bad luck all around you. Well, I want you to know tonight, first of all, God's aware of all things in your life. First of all, God is already making a way for your problems as we speak. But see, here's where the human mind and the human brain and the heart messes up. We look at all the big structured things, and we don't break those big things down. But the things we see that are so big to us as a human mind and human eyes, God sees so small. So we have to put our trust and faith in God to know that whatever we are going through, that God will make a way for us as long as we are willing to join in with him and to sacrifice ourselves and to be humble and submit ourselves, surrender ourselves to him. You know, we're not going to have an easy recovery. I can tell you that right now to whoever's watching. It may not be but six people viewing in tonight. But you know what? God's got you six here. And I pray that you will share this video to your families, to your friends, plaster it on Facebook. And I know people are saying right now, well, there's Jamie Elliott over there at Grace. He's been talking about the same old thing for eight years or nine years. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, God may, may want you to hear something tonight. Maybe it's something that I haven't said, or maybe I have said it time and time over again. But maybe tonight will be the night where it will click and you will say, my goodness, I've been hearing that for a long time, but it never sunk in. Maybe tonight will be the night that something I say sink in. Not that it's anything that I can do for you. I can't keep you clean. I can't do anything about your salvation. The only thing I can be is a testimony. The only thing I can do is use my broken life that I had a little over nine years ago that God delivered me from the bondage of drugs and alcohol. All I can do is share you my life. And if that seems the same every week, then so be it. I'm doing what my responsibility is for God that I promised him if he ever got me out of the bondage of addiction that I would serve him for the rest of my life. So I have to sit here tonight. I've made a lot of uh, humbling decisions over the last nine years. I made a promise to Christ, and I'm trying to keep it on a daily basis. Does it get hard? Do I want to take the cross and lay it down some days and say, God, I think you picked the wrong one. I'm weak today, Lord. You know, do I do that sometimes? Yes, I, I, I'm human. I am very human, and some days I do get weak. But I got to remember today, where my power lies and my power comes from Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. He's the same uh, yesterday as he is today. And he's the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's everything to me. And until you realize how important Jesus Christ is and what he can do in your addiction and your recovery, then you're missing out on some good blessings because you have to stop today and you have to say, okay, what am I doing in my recovery? What are some things that I could do better? See, here's what we do. We, we get down on our luck, and I hate to say the word luck, so we're not going to say that no more tonight. We get down on ourselves, and we blame other people because we're not following the steps of recovery. Whether you're blaming somebody else, or you're blaming Grace, or you're blaming your local church, or you're blaming your AA or NA meeting, or your sponsor, we all have played the blame game, but let's be honest today. We are responsible for our own recovery. It ain't your sponsor's responsibility. It ain't my responsibility. It's your responsibility. And until you're really, really willing to accept the fact that recovery is your responsibility, then you're kicking the dirt. Because what you're doing is you're trying to cover your life with the pile of dirt that you kicked and hoping ain't nobody seeing it, but you find yourself falling every time. So now you got to take this little finger right here and you got to point around. You got to say, who am I going to blame for my mess up today? Am I going to blame the meat because somebody was there and I thought they was using, so it made me want to use, so I went home and used? No, 
You can't blame the meeting for you using. You blame yourself because you, because you put yourself in the position to use by hanging around the person that was using. Now, we try to keep it as safe as we can at that meeting at Grace, but I cannot control what goes on before the meeting. I can't control what goes on after the meeting, and I sure can't control what goes on when the people get home. Amen? Just like you don't know what I do when I get home. You don't know what I do when I wake up until you see with your eyes that I am somebody else that I claim that I am. But here's the thing. Going back to that, some people say, well, I'm not coming to a meeting no more. Whether it's Grace, whether it's anybody else's meeting in town. And let's face it, it ain't many addiction meetings around anymore. Let's face it. Let's be real. You're lucky to find anymore unless you go online or go out of town or go to Raleigh. So let's today be thankful for the meetings we do have in town. Even if it ain't but two or three, thank God that we have a meeting. Let's get involved in these meetings. Let's let's get back to working our recovery like we should be instead of staying at home and, and hiding. It's not going to do anybody no good to hide. You've got to be in God's house. You've got to be in the Word of God. You have to be reading the Word of God every day so that you can be strong in recovery. A lot of people say, well, Jamie, I don't like mixing uh, recovery with the Bible, but I, I, I beg the difference. I love the word of God. Thus, word of God is the truth of my life. This is how I fight my battles on a daily basis. This is how I stay strong. This is what keeps me mentally stable. It's the word of God. I have to have it. Just like the meetings. I have to have a meeting. You may say tonight, how can you want to have a meeting, Jamie? You give the meeting. You're talking at the meeting. Even though that I'm a leader at Grace Ministries, even though that I do give the meeting on Tuesday night, I've got to be there. Because when I come in those doors and I look around and I see people just like myself that's suffering, that's having a hard time, somebody there that I can discuss my problems with during men's group or women's group, it opens me up. It makes me accountable because I have people around me that makes me accountable. Am I perfect in life? No, and I'll never be. I've done some stupid things in the past and still do stupid things, but I love the Lord, and that's why I do what I do. I give these meetings, and sometimes, yes, it is hard, y'all. Sometimes I do look and say, you know, the devil will get on my back, and he'll say, you ain't doing no good, Jamie. You wasting your time. Just go back to your regular life. Go fishing. Go hunting. Have some freedom. Go do this. But that ain't what it's about, y'all. I made a promise to God because he delivered me out of a bondage of addiction to go out here and share my life and my testimony to who all will listen. And I thank God for that today. I thank God that, that I'm clean today. I'm not perfect in other ways, but thank God that I'm clean today. Can I fall tomorrow? Yes, I can, but through God's grace today, I made it another day clean. So you may say, well, how are you going to get through tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to get through tomorrow the same way I did today, through God's help, His grace, and through His Word. And that's the only way I can make it. I have to stay grounded today. And I just need to focus for just one second, and I need to slow down because there's so much stuff that I want to talk about tonight. But the, the, my internet's messing up. And, and, and I hope that you are being able to watch this now. But um, going back to talking about people won't come back to the meeting no more because they hear other people using. Well, I want to ask you this. Do you realize how crazy that sounds? I mean, really think about this. When you get in your car and you go to a gas station to pump gas, what do you see? You see transactions on the corner at the gas station. When you walk in the gas station and you pay for your gas and you look, you see the glass case beverage aisle. What kind of temptation is that? Is that not a temptation? So if you can't come to a meeting and get God's word and be stable, how can you go to a gas station and pump gas and look at the um, beverage case? Amen? You can't. So it's everywhere you go. Some people say, I'm moving out of Henderson. I'm getting as far as I can away. Well, I'm telling you again, I don't care if you go to the highest mountain in the world, you're going to find some kind of drug there or somebody that knows how to get it. So it's everywhere you go. Here's the thing, y'all. You might think tonight, Jamie, you sound kind of mad, but I'm not mad. I'm hurt tonight because I see numbers. I see when the COVID, before the COVID hit, numbers was like 50, 60, 70, 80 people. 
Now we might have 10 people on a Tuesday night. Some people will say that's what you get. That's what you deserve. It's some cruel, mean people out there. But I'm going to keep giving this meeting. I'm going to keep giving my life for God. And I keep doing it if it ain't but three people at that meeting because I made a responsibility to God to use my life to help save somebody else's. And that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So if that's what it comes down to, the five people, then thank God for the five honest people I've got at that meeting. And I just wanted to share that tonight because I used to get on Facebook and talk about recovery, addiction. And, I, you know, people would tune in. They would say this and be all involved. When I go live now, I can't get a, a like. I can't get a thank you, God, for recovery. I can't get nothing no more. So where is all the people that was once in recovery? Where are y'all at? Where are all the people that said, I can't wait till we get a place of our own? Where are you at? Where's all the supporters that promised that they were going to stand up and push the recovery ministry? Where are you at? So I want to ask you tonight, what is your responsibility in your life? What are you doing to help God's kingdom grow? What are you doing with your life to help sick and addictive addicts on the street that has no hope? I can't do it by myself. Thank God at Grace Ministries we have a team of people that are loving people, that do care about the sick and addicted, and that are using their life to help somebody else's. Now, are we perfect? No, we'll never be there either. But we strive to do everything we can for the Lord Jesus Christ and to let people know that it is hope through addiction and that hope is Jesus Christ. Now, that's enough for all that tonight. But I want you to know that you can't run away from your meeting. You can't go and hide because other people are using around you. That's, gonna, that's the way it is at every meeting. That's the way it is at every treatment facility. Everywhere you go is going to be always somebody sneaking, using, or coming in high, nodding off, or smelling of alcohol. That's just the way it is, and it's going to always be that way. So let's face it, you need to be at that meeting because you got to be there because it's going to save your life and you're going to learn the Word of God and God's going to teach you to stay away from those people that, that you're triggered to be around. See, here's the thing. You go to a meeting and hear that or see that, first thing you need to do is say, I'm here for Jamie. I come to this meeting tonight because I need to be with the Lord tonight. I come to this meeting tonight because I've got a family at home that depends on me because I made a promise and I made a, a commitment to, to, to get clean and to stay clean. And when I see other people doing wrong, I don't let that bother me. You know what I say? Thank you, God, that that ain't me today. Thank you, God, that I'm not fighting that temptation because I can tomorrow. I could fall tomorrow. I'm not perfect. Amen. But I know that I've got to have those meetings. And that's why responsibility is so hard today. That's why when you make a commitment to the Lord, you need to follow through it. In this scripture I'm going to read tonight, it talks about exactly that. Now think about this. What are you willing to give up for Christ? He is willing to give up his life. And he did give up his life for you and me. Have you accepted him tonight? Have you said, I'm through with drugs and alcohol and before it comes out of your mouth, I know you're going to say it. Well, you make it sound so easy, Jamie. No, it ain't easy. I've been having a battle for nine years, and every day is still a battle. But through God's help, I've made it this far. And through God's help, I will make it another day. And it's not easy. We all going to have times. I look around my household here, and, you know, I just want to put this out here. Let's be honest tonight. I've got a roof that needs to be prepared tonight. i got a refrigerator on the brink about to blow out. It's freezing everything up. I've got mold in my back room tonight that I've got to get taken care of. I've got trials in my life too, but I'm not going to let none of that mess get in between me and my recovery. I'm not going to let none of that stuff bring me down and take my focus off God because I know in due time, God's going to make a way to get everything i got to get done. But I've got to step out the way and not worry about it. And that's what I'm talking about tonight. You know, we made a big commitment when we served Christ. When we said, Jesus Christ, I ask you to come in my heart. I ask you to save me. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my drug habits. Forgive me of everything that I've ever done. I made a commitment to follow Christ. What I did that night when he come in my heart, I picked that cross up and I'm, I'm carrying that cross. I love Jesus Christ. I know what he has done in my life. I know the bondage of addiction that he broke in my life. 
And it isn't easy. Some days it's hard, but through his help, his mighty power, I have the strength to face tomorrow that I didn't have uh, years ago because I denied him. I didn't want a part of him. I wanted my life to be happy. I wanted to feel my uh, commitment. I, I wanted to make myself feel free. But I found out a long time ago through drugs and alcohol that it ain't the drugs and alcohol. that It, it ain't that that was filling it. The devil had me bounded. He had me blind. He wanted me to think that I was going to be sick and addicted the rest of my life. And this was the only way that I had to live. I watched several shows over the week. I read a part of a book the other night on intervention and talking about families who has given up on their family members. They, they, they're almost happy to see the family member get put in jail because they claim that they can get a good night's sleep with the family member in jail, y'all. That's sad. That's sad when, when addiction takes a hold of your life so bad that not only it affects you, but it affects your family member as well. See, not only you are sick in addiction, but your family's come just as sick as you are because they don't know what to do. You don't know how to stop. Everybody's raising their hands up and praying, but it, it's a way out of this situation tonight. But first, it starts with you and a commitment you need to make to Christ tonight. I want to read this scripture real quick. And it talks about God is impossible. And I want you to know tonight, I don't know what you got going on in your life. I don't know what kind of drug you're using. You may be watching tonight and you may just got high five minutes ago. And I want to tell you something tonight. It's, it's, it's okay. It's not okay to use, but it's okay to feel like you're feeling. Amen. Please take this time tonight and know. Reach out to God tonight. You might say, Jamie, I got saved two years ago. You might say, Jamie, I, I, I was living right. And six months ago, I had some things come upon me and I just gave up, Jamie. I walked and I walked away and I just, I gave up on life. I started back using. I want to stop. I don't love this life. But Jamie, what can I do? I want to tell you tonight, it's nothing that I can do. Amen. I can sit here and pray for you. I can, I can ask God to just, uh, put his hands on every addict out there that's using tonight. Everybody that's struggling with addiction and their recovery that feels like they're going to go use. I just want to lift up a special prayer tonight before we get into scripture. I want to pray for somebody tonight that's struggling. Maybe it's with a pipe. Maybe it was with a alcohol bottle. Maybe it's with a needle. I don't know what your drug addiction is. Maybe it's pills. Maybe it's marijuana. I don't know what your situation is. But I want to have a prayer tonight. I want to go to the Lord and I want to pray for strength. I want to pray for salvation. I want to pray for lost souls out there that does not have Jesus in their heart and that's fighting this battle of addiction on your own. So please, let's go to the Lord and pray. Dear Heavenly and Most Gracious Father, Lord, I pray that if there's anybody out there that's not saved, Lord, that has never called on you, I pray tonight that they will call on you, that they will fall on their knees and they will, they will surrender their life for you. And they would ask you to come in their heart and save them right where they're at. Lord, I pray it may be somebody out there that's that's going through a battle right now, whether it's addiction or uh, whatever kind of addiction it is. There's several addictions out there. Uh, it's not only addictions, but you got trials. You got you got loss of jobs. You got hurt. You got uh, anything that's bothering somebody, Lord, that's, that's making them oppressed or depressed. Lord, we just pray for those souls tonight. We pray that you will lift them up and Lord, that you will guide them and that you will bless them all in your will and, and their need, Lord. And we just thank you so much for letting us come to you tonight in prayer. And we just thank you, your gracious love for giving your son Jesus to die on the cross, Lord, to give us salvation, everlasting life through your son, Jesus. And we just praise you and we thank you. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. So I want to leave y'all with this scripture tonight and let y'all uh, meditate on this. Maybe when you go lay down, mark this in your Bible right here. Actually read the whole thing. You can start at uh verse, just say start at 22. It's uh John chapter 18, 22 through 30. Go all the way from 22 through 30. I'm going to read 26 tonight. Well, 27 tonight, but this is a powerful scripture right here. Now listen to what it says. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Now, I want you to know everything is, is, is terrible to us. And, and looking out of his human body and his human mind, 
we see things a lot different, but God sees them a, a lot more and he can do more than we can. You know, I want you to think about that tonight. Everything through God is possible. He has made a way for us to have salvation, uh, everlasting life. He has given us a way to be happy and free of addiction. And I know sometimes, you know, you hear the word free. I think about what Jesus gave up on the cross for your life and my life. And I thank God today that his grace. And I thank God that my faith is in Jesus Christ of what he did at the cross of Calvary. What he did for you and what he did for me. I thank God today that I'm able to come to y'all tonight. I thank God that I said what I wanted to say tonight. I thank God that I let God direct me. And uh, I won't go even say anything on responsibility. I won't go even say anything about the meeting. But I just feel like it needs to be known that you can't blame everybody around you for your mistakes. But you've got to blame yourself and you've got to take responsibility for your actions. And you have to do an honest evaluation of where where you where you are in your recovery right now and what you're doing to move on. And I pray everybody's moving forward that you're not moving backward. But keep praying. If you say, Jamie, I'm praying, pray harder. If you pray harder, pray harder. Amen. Just never give up on God because God never walks away from us, but it's us who walk away from God. God loves you here tonight. Thank you for letting me come on. Thank you for watching tonight. It's been a blessing to see the names pop up, and thank God I see some names on there tonight that I hadn't seen in a while, so it's a blessing to me tonight to see y'all's names up there tonight. I can't see that good. Most of you that know know me, I don't have my reading glasses on, so I can't see exactly, but I can see it enough, but thank God for y'all watching tonight. Next Tuesday night, hopefully, we'll be back to our meeting. I, stay, I keep y'all posted on Facebook, but just uh, just be praying for grace. Be praying for the leaders and just uh, be praying for God to continue to use us. And you that hadn't been in a while, whether you know it or not, you might say, Jamie, you, you ain't telling the truth. But I'm going to be honest with you. I miss you. I laid in the bed the other night and I thought about the good times that we had years ago when we first started this ministry. And I think about the wonderful group of people that, that, that we used to be surrounded with. And COVID come and it's like it, it just strode everything and it just it's just hard to get everybody back together. But I pray that if you hadn't watched me in a while, that if you watch tonight, please try to find a way to get to the meeting next Tuesday night. And I keep you all informed during the week. If you don't have a church to go to, I'm also got ordained to uh, preach now. So we are having a um, recovery service. It's, 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 it's more like church. It's not recovery on Sundays. It's more out of the word of God. So we would invite you at uh, 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings at Grace Ministries. So with that said, y'all, I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed night. And look, reach out to somebody in your family that's struggling with addiction. Give them hope. Give them peace through Jesus Christ. Support them. Be there for them. Love on them because tomorrow's not promised. So thank God for y'all. I love y'all from Grace Ministries. Y'all have a blessed night.